Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk about time series and deconstructing time series, which is kind of the basic idea and approach of how you would model um, a time series set of data and how we'd use this to actually forecast um, predictions for the future. So let's just dive on in here. Time series itself is constructed of three components. You have T, which is going to be your trend. You have C, which is going to be your cyclical component. And then you have S, which is going to be your seasonal component here. And then a lot of times people refer to this as I, but we're going to call this epsilon, which is going to be our error term here. So just a quick reminder here, we're going to have a time series. Um, T on the X axis is going to be time. Um, y is going to be on the Y axis. And we're going to be modeling something um, over time and we want to create a model to do this um, time series is very specific on deconstruction so this is the approach that most people take it helps us understand each component independently so if you had some time series such as this um, we could look at this in different parts the first part as we mentioned here would be your trend this is something as simple as a regression um, so you'd have like a y equals alpha plus beta um, times t. And you can see here though that this model is okay, but it over predicts, it looks like in a consistent fashion in these areas, and then it under predicts in these areas in the similar fashion. Um, one way to think about this is say a annual issue here. So it looks like every year perhaps it's over predicting. So this would be 12 month period. And then if you look at these other components here, so this is like a little under prediction here, um, between these two components would also be 12 months. So what's happening is there's some sort of cycle that we need to model. And so in this simple case here, what we ended up having was you had some data here and it had some, right, it had some trend which we took out. It had some cyclicality here we removed. And so what ends up happening is you subtract the trend um, and you should end up with something such as this. So again, as we mentioned, right, this is Y equals trend, cyclicality, seasonality. And so now what happens is we need to remove um, this S component as we move the cyclicality portion. So let's say we end up with this third chart here and let's say there's this little tiny trend now, right? It seems like there's a lot more of these um, over the same space as there was uh, the cyclical parts. And so this would be the seasonal components. We would have Y, T, C is equal to your seasonal component. And then if we were able to remove that, um, we should end up with some chart here where basically there's some dots around the zero line. Nothing really looks like there's a pattern anymore. And so you have some models such that you know, Y, T, C, and S are all in the same size. And you're just gonna have some error here. So this is, goes back to like basic statistics theory. You're always gonna have some error. We're never gonna be exact, but as long as the error is small and normally distributed, which we'll cover later, um, we're happy and it looks good. So just in conclusion here, I hope the takeaway you guys get is that if you had some model um, Y and it has a trend component, a cyclical component, and a lot of times you won't have a seasonal component, but if you do have a seasonal component, um, we're just going to like decompose this Y into different components here, such that you know you had um, T, which is going to be this trend part, and then you would have um, your cyclical component here, which is going to be these big cyclical components. And so cyclicality, the way to describe this, uh, cyclicality is typically viewed as greater than one year where seasonality is typically viewed as less than one year. Um, but again, if you remove your seasonality here, seasonality should be something that's like a little pattern that happens more frequently than your cyclicality here. And if you end up putting all three of these kind of together, you should end up with the final chart which we were talking about here, which looks something like this. Um, more realistically though, if you had a seasonal component and a cyclical component, it looks something like this, where you'd have these micro, I guess, seasonal components. And so if you end up adding 
both the trend, the cyclical, and the seasonal, what you should end up with um, is some sort of model that models this, which would be a composition of your trend, your seasonal, um, and your cyclical components all put together. So this is just the basic construct here. Everything's gonna be broken out into these three kind of components. Realistically thinking, these are just two kind of components. You have your trend, which is gonna be a linear part, and then you have your seasonal, your cyclical, uh, maybe sub-seasonal, sub-sub-seasonal. You're gonna have all these different pieces we're gonna kind of add together. And when you add each one of these components together, they're going to give us the final prediction. And by using this model, you should be able to have um, your typical model somewhat. And we're gonna have the model here that looks something like this, right? It kind of fits. And then what we're really looking for when we do time series is going to be this component. Um, this is going to be your forecast. And what we're looking for is we want to be able to forecast, right, this other pattern. But again, we need this pattern to hold across the entire forecast. And to do this, we're gonna do the deconstruction of the different components of the time series. So just a quick introduction here. I hope you guys liked this video. If you do, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.